gentlemen and tarnest of all ages, how do you feel about horses? Yay or nay? Okay, I get it. No jokes, just build, yeah? Well, today is all about how to make the most of your time on Torrent. Not necessarily the strongest build on foot, but as far as I'm concerned, this is genuinely the strongest you can possibly be when fighting from a horse in Elden Ring. This is THE cavalry build. Bleed is involved, of course, and you spin twin blades like no tomorrow in order to apply it, and so I've called this one the Horse Meat Grinder. And the spacing between those words is really important, unless you're going to fight a giant horse. Anyways, there aren't a massive amount amount of important bosses in the game that you can fight from horseback, but there are a few notable ones. And aside from that, obviously the entire open world just lets you ride torrent around, so why not find the one build that really takes the most advantage of that situation? Obviously prolonged fights are difficult from a horse without the ability to properly dodge roll as your horse is pathetically incapable of performing a barrel roll with you on its back for some reason. But the speed that you gain and the height that you can get allow for more positioning based dodging than you can normally manage on foot, and being allowed to make horse with non-horse allows you to really maximize this advantage, especially for something like the Fire Giant boss, which causes a lot of people a lot of grief. It's also worth mentioning that in this specific build, every single thing that I'm fighting is in New Game Plus. Obviously the numbers that you see popping up when I hit stuff are exactly the same against whatever difficulty enemy you are fighting, but for an idea of how long stuff is taking to die, it all has a load of bonus health compared to normal. If you're wondering how this works in PvP, well, obviously you can't ride horses in PvP, which sort of removes 95% of the point of this build, and as a result, it just becomes a mid-tier bleed build. Not as good as even dual-wielding twin blades, for somewhat obvious reasons. However, that said, it is still more than capable of killing people if you want to do so in PvP while using it. It had a little bit of everything, didn't it? So, how then do we accomplish this absolutely deadly build? A wonderful combination of finding the fastest, most reliable horse attack and turning it into a bleed build, of course. The answer is, uh, twin blades. While power stancing weapons, there are weapons that arguably can hit faster than twin blades, can apply bleed harder than twin blades, but you simply aren't able to power stance on a horse, and while jump attacks can make bleed even stronger if you jump off the horse, then you're just, well, no longer on the horse. It's no more effective than just using that build normally, and so what we have is one-handing a twin blade from the back of the horse, holding that heavy attack button to spin it like hell until your enemy falls over by death by a thousand cuts. To achieve this, we have one of the best scaling twin blades in the godskin peeler. It is also just a neat looking weapon that also looks hilarious when you use seppuku with it, hooking it the whole way through your chest. On which note, we use seppuku on the weapon with occult affinity so that the seppuku bleed will scale up with our arcane attribute. To get the weapon, you have to defeat the boss at the top of the windmill village, and to get seppuku, you have to kill the invisible scarab located right around here in the freezing lake of the mountaintop of the giant's region. As we are, of course, using this to cause bleeds, we use the white mask helmet for a 10% damage boost for 20 seconds after causing a bleed, including when you use seppuku on yourself. And then also the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman, which gives you a 20% damage boost for 20 seconds after causing a bleed, for a total of 30% damage boost during that time period. To get the helmet, as well as the matching armor set, you have to defeat the invaders in the Lake of Blood under the Mogwin Palace, which has to be done before killing Mog himself. For the talisman, you have to beat the boss at the end of the Lanedale Catacombs dungeon, located in the sewers under the capital city itself. Then we come to arguably the most important part of this build, the thing that no other type of build in this game will ever really use, really ever even think about, and honestly, as someone who prides themselves on their collection of nearly everything in the game, I was surprised to learn that even I did not have this talisman until I was building up this build. The Lance Talisman. This thing, well, raises your damage while mounted by around 15%. This is a pretty significant bonus, and of course, it doesn't do anything for you at all when you fall off the horse, and so why would the average player care about this thing at all? It also isn't a reward for a boss or a dungeon of any kind that you'd be doing if you're a completion it's just out in the open world waiting to be found if you wander upon it. In fact, in Limgrave of all places, up in the northeast right near the edge of this cliff face, you will find a corpse holding it waiting for you. Past this, we of course just want to take advantage of the speed of this, the absolute uh, rapidity of the hits that you get while hitting this attack. The build is heavily based around hitting quickly, and there are a couple of nice stackable strong talismans that boost your damage when doing specifically just that. Millicent's Prosthesis gives you a lesser buff from consecutive attacks, as as well as a plus five to your dexterity attribute. And then the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia Talisman gives you a more sizable buff to your attack power after doing consecutive attacks as well. And this singular button input just about pushes both of these to their maximum damage bonus straight away. And so, on a Snow Troll, one 
single twirl of the button hits for close to 7,000 damage. So, you know, when you put it all together and get it functioning properly, it's actually pretty damn impressive. To get these talismans both, you have to finish the Millicent quest line, which you can start from Gowrie's shack on the eastern side of Kayla just at the end of the highway. In the same vein as those talismans though, one half of your wondrous flask mixture is also set for you in order to boost your damage after consecutive hits, and that is the Thorny Cracked Tear. This one comes from the boss of the Minor Air Tree in the northeast of the Consecrated Snowfields region. Your other wondrous flask mixture slot is fully open to you to change situationally based on what you need. And then the final pieces to make this as strong as it is are very classic, included in pretty much literally any build that is able to fit them, and both of them are of course incantations. To cast them, you need to have some sort of seal, and anything that has zero weight is ideal, regardless of whether or not you have the stats to wield it correctly, as the red X being apparent on a seal only lowers incantation scaling, which has no effect at all on the two buff-based incantations that we use here. Golden Vow, of course, which raises your damage by 15%, and your defense by 10% for 80 seconds, and then Flame Grant Me Strength, which boosts your physical and fire damage by about 20% for 30 seconds after casting. Both of these, of course, affecting our methods of damage used in this build. To get Golden Vow, head to the Corpse Stench Shack on the eastern side of Mount Gelmir, and Flame Grant Me Strength is located behind Fort Gale on the western side of Kaelid, perched between a couple of wheelie death wagons waiting to burn your brains out. I'm really excited! With that, then, you know every piece that makes this function properly, as well as how to get them. So what are the attributes that you want to have to get the most out of this as well? Mostly, the answer is Arcane. Of course, you want to get as close to 60 Vigor as you can first for comfortability. You need 17 strength and 22 dexterity in order to wield the weapon in the first place, then you want to get your 80 arcane for all of your scaling that we're doing, 25 faith to be able to use both of our incantations, and then just enough endurance to wear the build alongside with the fashion armor set of your choice. And that just about covers it. This is the strongest that you can get on a horse to live out your Radon-like dreams of never being separated from your four-legged companion. But instead of learning magical gravity powers, you just uh, picked up a big pointy stick and started twirling it, I guess. Look, we all achieve greatness in our own ways, okay? I know this isn't the strongest build in the whole game, but it is the strongest build in one specific aspect of the game, and I really love making funky builds like that that are still worth using for one reason or another. So I hope you all enjoyed this experience of the horse meat grinder. Are you going to be using this out for yourself, or even just apply some parts of it to yourself when you're on horseback specifically? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.